I'm Brian LaCroix from Alina Health EMS. The intersection of excellence is modeled after the work of Dorothy Del Bueno, a nurse and educator. Bringing together the three critical pillars of technical skills, critical thinking, and interpersonal skills separates good providers from those who are truly exceptional. Well, uh, thanks for having me out. It's, uh, I think in 2005, I went through uh, Inver Hills EMT uh, class, and uh, I wanted to get trained up before I went to Iraq in case anything happened over there. I could be of help to my buddies. I ended up being the one that needed the help, but uh, that's how it works sometimes. So just over six years ago, we did a foot patrol in the morning to go and find, we wanted to watch this intersection that insurgents had been putting roadside bombs in uh, very frequently. We wanted to find out who was doing it. And as we rounded the corner to the south, I remember hearing this, uh, this metallic clank, this plink, and this loud quiet. I don't uh, remember flying through the air and I don't remember hitting the ground, but I remember waking up on the ground and uh, I saw that my left leg just above the knee was connected maybe by a piece of skin, but probably just my pant leg. The femur was broken and it was sticking out. Uh, I mean, it was wide open like a baked potato. That one wasn't bleeding uh, too badly. Uh, I didn't look too much what was below, but I mean, my leg was in really rough shape below that too, from what I remember. Uh, my right leg just below the knee looked like I stuck it in a wood chipper and was bleeding profusely. Uh, so I was pretty sure that this is where my life was gonna end. So then I asked about the others, and she told me two of my best friends, Corey Ristead from Red Lake Falls, Minnesota, and Brian McDonough from Maywood, Minnesota, had died in the blast. So for me, that was the absolute rock bottom, lowest I've ever felt in my life. So I don't want to bum everybody out. That's not the goal here, you know. It's uh, more about perspective, you know. I, I, I don't think I appreciated life until I realized that it ends, that it is short. And in this job, you all get it. You see it every day. You live, you're surrounded by it, and that's tough. Um, but it's also, we can use it as a reminder to how fortunate we are to have the things we have, to live where we live, and I think that's important perspective. I want to see if you'll offer the opportunity to talk about at least one or two examples of where the healthcare really impressed you, things that left a mark on you, because you went through a long time where you were uh, daily interacting with healthcare people. Yeah. The biggest thing is, yeah, there's the clinical importance of making sure I was taken care of, my needs were being met as a patient, but my wife is every bit as much of a patient as I was and my children too, and making everybody a part of it, it made it easier on me and easier on them. Later, the very first one was when I was still in the ICU when I just woke up. They were talking, they were doing their rounds, and they were talking about the surgery they had to do through my pelvis. And it's a, there's residents at that hospital, it's a learning hospital too, and they were outside the door talking about the surgery. Okay, what would you do? One of the person talks about this, wrong, you'll kill him, he'll die, next. And they're being blunt with them, but I'm sitting there going, I'm going to die. Yep, this is it. I lived through this blast, and they're going to kill me in the operating room. And all this stuff, nope, you can't do that, he'll be paralyzed. So finally my wife went out there and she's like, are you guys out of your mind? What would you offer as advice to people that are out in the street interacting with families, providers? Uh, you know, you've seen both sides of it now. I guess when always take a step back and try and put yourself in their shoes and that's probably what we're all taught not to do because you have to detach yourself from the patient to an extent you have to have empathy towards them you have to or, you know you have to have sympathy with what they're going through but there's a fine line i think where yeah to go home at night and be sane yeah you can't pretend that's your loved one because that's going to kill the things you see on a daily basis god bless you guys I know that clinical, I will never forget seeing that stuff. It was crazy. But I think in order to be a good, like they were saying, wanting to take it to the next level, I know you guys are awesome and your people are awesome at saving patients, at giving them quality uh, medical treatment. Uh, but try and think if you were, like in my wife's sh shoes, you know, what would you want done? Just take a moment to step back before you do something, you know. If there is an accident or a, a scene that was horrific, you and you're sitting around joking with the firefighters or whatever that you haven't seen that often, like we talked about, you know, you got to laugh in this job. You have to have a horrible sense of humor. I know that. I don't consider it horrible, but you know what I mean. 
you have to laugh about things that are so tragic. Otherwise, you're going to go nuts. And so you just have to watch your surroundings. Think of how it looks to other people. If someone drives by and there's a car with a blanket on it because someone died in there, and there's uh, paramedics and EMTs sitting around with firefighters laughing and joking, take a step back, empathize with them, and try and help. Thank you.